Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. This is our last presentation in The Mathematics of Profit. Remember that economic profit is total revenue minus total opportunity cost. In our previous presentations, we've examined what we mean by total revenue. It's the price that you sell each unit times the number of units you sell. And we've looked at what we mean by total opportunity cost. It includes the fixed costs, the costs that do not change as you vary your output, plus the variable costs. Add them up to get the total cost. For any level of output, QI, our total profit is just going to be our total revenue at that level of output minus our total cost at that level of output. So what level of output maximizes our economic profit? Mathematically, to solve for that, we simply need to find the derivative of our profit function and work out where the derivative is equal to zero. That's going to be the maximum level of profits, the top of the profit hill. And as profit is total revenue minus total cost, the change in profit with a change in quantity is simply the change in total revenue with a change in quantity minus the change in total cost with a change in quantity. But we know what these two things are. We know that the change in total revenue with the change in quantity is simply our definition of marginal revenue. And similarly, we know that our change in total cost with a change in quantity, well, that's just our definition of marginal cost. So to find our profit-maximising level of output, we want to find out the level of output where marginal revenue minus marginal cost is equal to zero. Or equivalently, we want to find the level of output for the business such that marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That level of output will be our profit maximising level of output. Why? Well, the intuition is really simple. Let's think about this simple example. Suppose your business currently produces 100 units. The question you want to ask is, should you produce more than 100 units? Should you produce less than 100 units? Or should you produce exactly 100 units to maximise your profit. So the question there is, do you want to produce more, less, or the same? Well, let's answer that. Let's suppose that if you produce one extra unit, a hundred and one unit, then your marginal revenue is, say, $15. We've seen how to calculate that in our earlier presentation. Now, suppose that your marginal cost when you produce the 101th unit, is only $12. That's the extra cost of producing the one more unit. Notice that in this situation, the marginal revenue is greater than the marginal cost. Should you produce the extra unit? Well, yes. When you produce the extra unit, your revenue goes up by $15. Your cost only goes up by $12. You make $3 more profit. So in this situation, marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost, you want to expand your output. But what would happen if the marginal revenue of the 101th unit was, say, $15, but the marginal cost was equal to, say, $17? Well, in that case, marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue. And notice in that case, you certainly do not want to produce the extra unit. If you produce the extra unit, you only increase revenue by $15, but you increase cost by $17. You lose $2. You're $2 worse off by producing that extra unit. So if marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue, you certainly don't want to increase production. If anything, you want to decrease production. But finally, what about if marginal revenue of that extra unit is $15? And marginal cost, well, let's suppose that's also $15. Well, 
So marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Should you produce an extra unit? Well, you don't care. If you produce the extra unit, you get an extra $15 of revenue. If you produce the extra unit, it costs you an extra $15. So they just net out to zero. You're no better off, you're no worse off if you increase production. So in that situation where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, you know that the 100 units you've got are just the right level to maximise profits. You, you can't increase profits by producing more and you can't increase profits by producing less. One small caveat here, for those of you who really like the maths. Whilst our profit maximising condition is marginal revenue equals marginal cost, I haven't actually checked the second order conditions. Mathematically, we also have to check that the change in marginal revenue, as quantity changes, minus the change in marginal cost, as quantity changes, we have to check that that's less than zero. If that doesn't hold, instead of maximising profits, we would be minimising profits. In our diagrams later on, this condition, this second order condition, is going to be equivalent to the marginal cost curve cutting the marginal revenue curve from below. And in general, we're going to concentrate on those situations because they're the situations that are relevant for a firm. If the opposite held, the firm would never produce that level because it would never maximise profits. Finally, remember that if our firm is a price-taking firm, so in other words, in our perfectly competitive market model, then marginal revenue is simply equal to the price. So in this situation, our profit maximising condition is price equals marginal cost. Or more correctly, a price-taking firm in a perfectly competitive market should produce a level of output such that at that level of output, the marginal cost of production is just equal to the price that the firm can sell its output at, the price in the marketplace. Thanks for listening to these three presentations on the maths of profit maximisation. Next time we're going to go back to the diagrams. Talk to you then.